Well, again, uh, it's not so easy to make a talk after so many talks on the subject that were today. Uh, but I will try to make uh, some relatively, uh, well, I won't say new, but at least different insight into a subject that we had uh, concerning the Kurvitz numbers and, uh, well, uh, and related matrix models and also I was I still don't know how to put it because uh, uh, on the one side this is uh, a place where um, these matrix models were to much extent invented and supplied. Uh, on the other side, yes, uh, uh, in the audience maybe not everyone is aware about matrix models, so I will try to skip some technical parts and uh, start with a simple combinatorial model and simple combinatorial description of uh, grotten dick disson and Fon relation to Bialik pairs and partitions of Riemann surfaces then we'll go to uh, complex matrix model for this uh, Grotten Dick Descent and Fon. Then we consider generalizations of these models for what is called hypergeometric Hurwitz numbers. And it's actually happened that <coughs> these generalizations uh, uh, give rise to a sort of, uh, well, I would say new matrix models of total chain type uh, for which we are able to find uh, spectral curves and develop a topological recursion. And on the way, of course, I made uh, many remarks uh, about how it's all related to uh, other topics of the conference. So, uh, first I recall, this was already in the morning session, that we have uh, a special uh, description for homotopy types of ramified mappings from the complex plane to the Riemann surface of genus G. So, for its numbers in general, they are combinatorial classes of uh, ramified mapping uh, and uh, actually devil is in details, so uh, all depends on what is the pattern of ramification that we allow in the picture. Uh, so, for instance, in uh, Grotten Dick's case, uh, we consider mappings uh, that are ramified on the complex plane over exactly three points, which are chosen by optionally to be 0, 1, and infinity. Uh, but at every point, we have a, well, in principle, rather complex ramification profile described <coughs> by, by a young tableau. Well, there will be examples later. So, and this profile fix the set of ramification types at the given point, but then we can consider all possible, actually, uh, relations or continuations of this uh, ramification to other points, so we can obtain quite an involved combinatorial picture, and we want to calculate, to count all uh, homo homotopically non-trivial and non-related types of these ramifications. Uh, why it was so important in uh, mathematics? It's based on the theorem by Bailey, uh, who stated that we have, if we have a smooth complex al algebraic curve defined over the field of algebraic numbers, then it is defined only when we have a constant well, function, con non-constant meromorphic function on, on C uh, that has ramifications <coughs> only over th exactly three points. And then it was observation by Grotendieck that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between isomorphism classes of Kelly pairs and connected bipartite fat graphs. Uh, 
So, before describing this, let me just introduce some vocabulary uh, and uh, commonly we consider a situation where we have uh, single or double Hurwitz numbers and uh, single and double pertain to the number of points in which we fix ramification types. So, for instance, if we, cons if we fix ramification types type uh, just at one point, uh, having the corresponding gamma to blue lambda, then it's single Hurwitz numbers. If uh, we fix at two points, lambda and mu, uh, then uh, it's uh, considered to be double Hurwitz numbers, and by some reason we don't consider uh, more uh, well, Hurwitz numbers with fixed ramification types in uh, larger number of points by different reasons, <coughs> one of which is that we cannot usually do anything with these cases, and the second one is that precisely these two cases are somehow falling to a category of models that admit uh, uh, that uh, have some underlying integrable structure described by a KP hierarchy. Tau functions. So, and now I say that we have different ramification types and original Hurwitz numbers about which I will not talk today, uh, but which are probably the <coughs> they are most important, it's just they have, they are not related to what <coughs> indeed the sound and form. So, original Hurwitz numbers uh, has only so, e, so we, it's, they either have uh, one or two ramification points with the uh, involved profiles and also M other ramification points with just simple, pro, uh, si simple ramifications. And they were extensively studied, uh, that was again in the morning session by many different people and uh, then there is a model with Grotenik descent and form where we have exactly three ramification points with profiles lambda mu and nu and uh, in most cases we just uh, take a sum <coughs> over all possibilities of uh, ramification at the third point and consider generating functions based on just two points then we have a subclass of this R clean belly pairs where we have again exactly three ramification points again with profiles lambda mu and the third profile is given to be uh, so it <coughs> contains um, uh, just uh, square root singularities at every crossing with the corresponding uh, complex planes, which consider the covering of, of, of the CP1. And in this case, actually, only uh, single Hurwitz numbers, on the case of single Hurwitz numbers, uh, uh, can be uh, related to KP hierarchy. And finally, the most interesting for myself today will be hypergeometric, or uh, in other words, generalized belly pairs where we have fixed number of n of ramification points with profiles lambda and mu and two points and the uh, number of uh, other profiles in the remaining n minus two points and basically we take a sum again over all uh, these profiles. So all these cases actually <coughs> falls into, as, as I say, uh, the generated functions of all these models uh, actually are KP hierarchy tau functions, that means that they satisfy uh, bilinear hierarchy identities. And again, it was my uh, reference list is uh, by far not complete, but more, more or less I think it was uh, noted by Alexander Arlov and Shergin and Okunkov. Maybe, well, at least it is related to original Kovic numbers and hypergeometric ones. 
Okay, but again, it will not be a subject of my talk. Uh, so uh, the first point is the appearance of the fat graphs in the picture. So, uh, how to construct a fat graph corresponding to a descent alpha? Uh, this will be a three-valent bipartite fat graph, uh, which is actually a covering of a base graph that is drawn here. So, and this base graph actually describes the simplest ever non-ramified mapping from CP1 to CP1. <coughs> So it's uh, just constant. Uh, it, it is a constant function here, and uh, well, basically uh, we have possible ramification at zero, one, and infinity. Uh, so we split the complex plane into two halves: upper half and lower part, and lower half, and we paint them. Uh, you see white and yellow. And uh, then consider the images of these two points chosen arbitrarily, and we'll see that at the end of the day, uh, the images of these points under the mapping CG to CP1 uh, will constitute some vertices of a new fat graph. Uh, let's consider some example. For instance, here I try to depict a uh, uh, three-fold covering of a complex plane by a complex plane set. So these are all planar graphs. And if I come back to this picture and look at the images of these two points, then you see that we have uh, three pre-images of every point. And again, oops, sorry. So if I follow the images of these uh, red, blue, and green lines, they become uh, corresponding uh, lines that border some polygons in, in the plane. So for instance, uh, reds uh, were you see, uh, just bygones here, and then remain bygones here, in this example, this means that at zero point, oops, sorry, that at zero point we have no ramification at all. So, uh, on the contrary, at point one, point one, so you see that it was a bygone, now it becomes a hexagon, which means that in the end, just one, which means that we have exactly one. Uh, ramification of order 3 at 1 and at the point infinity again it was a bygone now it's again a hexagon so we have so this mapping describes uh, the map that is ramified exactly at two points and consider the triple covering of a, home, of a sphere by a sphere uh, the corresponding Grotendieck descendant form is a pre image of this interval between 0 and 1. And here, of course, this interval is uh, tripled. So here, this pre image is this 3 star. And for instance, the uh, Grotendieck descendant form distinguishes between, uh, uh, between different points. For instance, in the right hand side, we have more, more or less the same graph except that here the ramifications are at point 0 and 1 so the graph has the same structure also the coloring is different and you see that the grotten big descent and fun is also different before it was a star now it's a map so this is uh, when we have exactly three ramification points in principle, and it's interesting to consider a situation where we have more than three, and but apparently then we have uh, the same structures. So we have uh, again uh, here I present uh, the case where we have four ramification points. So it's half of points of infinity on two sides 
and five ramification points here. And uh, basically, when we map on the Riemann surface, uh, we obtain the same structure as in the uh, case of three points. So I slightly differ. I slightly differ. Uh, change the presentation, and now just maps uh, paint. Uh, you see uh, faces in different colors for the and equal four case. And here is an example of uh, possible uh, covering of, uh, say, torus. You see that uh, this side is identified with that side, and this side is identified with that side. So we have here a picture of torus uh, covered uh, by a number, which we are going to calculate later, of uh, copies of the complex. So the structure of the graph is such that we have a bipartite graph because uh, black and white circles correspond to pre-images of well, centers of some sort of pre-images of lower and upper half planes. Uh, at each point, we have exactly four edges coming out with the prescribed cyclic ordering, and this cyclic ordering is open. <coughs> for white and black vertices, and this means that we have well, some interesting fat graph structure, and it very much resembles uh, the structure that Vincent mentioned in his talk, <coughs> uh, painted edges, because we also can, of course, paint edges instead of uh, painting uh, corresponding uh, polygons here. So, the uh, number of colors correspond to the number of, of uh, points of ramification. And, and now we are going to consider the generating functions of such colors. Uh, again, uh, so the generating functions are such that, that we just follow uh, two colors. So, we uh, associate times of the model with the corresponding polygons of one color and uh, polygons of another color. So K are actually, uh, but polygons are of even order. So K, Ks are half orders of the corresponding, oh sorry, R, uh, R are half orders of the corresponding polygons and K uh, just indicate how many polygons of this sort we have on the corresponding Riemann surface. Uh, I introduced uh, several extra parameters. <coughs> These parameters just calculate how many uh, how many polygons of the corresponding sort <coughs> we have on the Riemann surface. So we have still some, um, some contribution from other coloring besides these two. And uh, again, it was shown by, well, well, it was recently shown by uh, these guys that uh, the exponential of this generating function is a KP hierarchy tau function, either in times t or uh, t striped or what t. Well, uh, of course, uh, we immediately tried to find out a matrix model that uh, but the matrix model was proposed also in these papers but we didn't know anything about possibility to solve it. So it turned out that uh, in order to pr produce a matrix model that can be described and solved using the topological recursion <coughs> method, uh, we proposed uh, to consider the case where all these gammas are equal uh, besides just the uh, gamma 2 and uh, it's also somehow uh, useful to impose the restriction that gamma 2 is bigger or equal gamma 3 so in principle we, can say we may also consider a situation when these gammas are equal but 
uh, it, it will just give some different model. So what we are going to calculate today is the following generating function. So again, it's uh, calculate double for this number because we have double series of times and uh, we have some avatars of this uh, other uh, uh, other color polygons by introducing this uh, factor where K2 is the number of polygons of sort 2 and uh, here are uh, all other types of polygons are summed up into this factor. Uh, we also, for technical reasons, it's convenient to make the following uh, MIVA type transformation. So, uh, to write down the matrix model in explicit form, I will present this type <coughs> as a traces of some, uh, of some diagonal matrix. Uh, and then, after all this long preparation, well, we come back to this picture that was before, and let's see what is going on here. So, I associate times with the white polygon, with the white and uh, hatched polygons. So, if you just look late, looking at this picture, what do we have here? For white polygons, we have the following young tableau. So, we have one, well, I you have to find it, but believe me, it is here. So we have one unification point of order 4, one of order 3, uh, five of order 2, and uh, two are non-unified. And uh, the same calculation <coughs> we can do for this hatched. And we associate the corresponding set of times to this young tableau into that young tableau. Uh, from other, uh, cro for cross hatched, we have just the length of this young tableau, which is 10, so we associate the factor gamma 2 to the power 10 to this. And for the gray, there are 11 of them, so we have this factor. <coughs> and we associate to all this diagram just the product of, this, of all these factors. Okay, so uh, what is a technically convenient tool? Uh, the first step is that if I'm coming back here, so I will see that uh, cycles of the same color never, never touch itself, which, and they are all polygons. So in principle, from topology, it's harmless just to contract this cycle and consider instead uh, vertices of a new model of a higher degree. And apparently because with each such cycle we associate the time, it's convenient to, to associate these times with the vertices of a new model. So that's, here is just one example. So when we have a rectangle, uh, I contract it, then I associate complex matrices with each uh, incoming <coughs> and outgoing uh, and outgoing um, edges at this model. So for instance here we have, it, it's, uh, it's an example for an equal <coughs> 5. For an equal 5 we have uh, 3 Beside the edges of this cycle, we have three outgoing edges from each vertex. And when we shrink all this, we obtain the following combination of matrices. And besides that, also recall that we have uh, that these times are represented by traces of matrices. So I just uh, insert these matrices at edges of, uh, not sorry, at edges, at vert, at uh, wedges of, uh, at each wedge of every such polygon. So here, here they are. <coughs> and uh, for instance, after shrinking this side, we obtain 
uh, vertex of uh, this sort of matrices, and uh, propagators are described just by uh, Gaussian terms. And to take into account that we also uh, keep in mind that we have uh, different gammas associated to every cycle, every cross-hatched cycle, and every gray cycle, uh, we also consider one of these matrices to be a rectangular complex matrix of size gamma 2n cross gamma 3n. This means that every closed line of red index will contribute factor gamma 2n, and every closed line, say, of green index will contribute gamma 3n. So now uh, everything is set, and just to mention that models, probably the very first model of this sort was proposed by Philippe and Claude Itzikson, and uh, they proposed to consider the generating function of clean belly number, actually double Hurwitz numbers for the clean belly graph, and uh, because the, the one of these partitions is just 2, 2, 2, that means that it's all just uh, uh, so, uh, polygons of length 4. If we contract these cycles and introduce now uh, double MIVA transformation, uh, we obtain the matrix model of this sort. Well, however, this model turned out to be not a KP tau function, and I think that up to now little is known about large N solution to this model. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, but uh, as was mentioned in the very, very first presentation by Jean Bernard, well, sometimes even unsolvable models turn out to be very useful because it, it was some good idea, I think, which we'll try to realize it, but of course in different situations. So, uh, now about technical solution. So we start with uh, the generating function of the model that I mentioned, and now we have a multiple multi-matrix integration over complex matrices with this incredible interaction term and this simple Gaussian terms. So the idea is actually to trade this incredible interaction term uh, to something simple but for the price of uh, distorting these Gaussian terms. Uh, so it's just a simple uh, uh, upper triangular transformation that we produce first and obtain in terms of new matrices again the matrix model with some uh, so the on the way we obtain some uh, uh but they are very simple so they are basically just uh, determinants of the <coughs> corresponding mat of the corresponding new matrices so the result of this relatively simple transformation <coughs> is the following so so this logarithmic term they come from uh, Jacobians uh, interaction term now depends only on one matrix B2 but every term here transforms into the uh, product of four matrices of this sort and uh, well the last term remains as it was uh, and the next step is to produce another matrix transformation or namely of which consists in introducing now emission matrices that are quadratic combinations of this uh, of these complex matrices. Uh, if I can, if I take this then all these matrices will be of the same size of size gamma 3n and Basically, the only thing to be checked is that uh, what will happen with the integration measure for which we have uh, so-called in mathematics 
margin of pass-through law, which claims that uh, if I consider uh, the matrix, uh, the, pro uh, the car measure on the space of rectangular complex matrices, <laughs> then this car measure becomes uh, quite a simple measure in, uh, in terms of eigenvalues of this matrix. So the only difference uh, from uh, the known case for, of quadratic matrix is the appearance of this term. And here is a unitary <coughs> matrix that we just forget about. So here xj are now non-negative eigenvalues of this Hermitian matrix, and this actually leads us to now, after the scaling transformation of this sort, we finally come to the integral uh, over a chain of Hermitian matrices of the same size, and uh, this chain of matrices has the following form, so it has a potential term, which is usual, uh, and it has interaction terms which are probably slightly unusual because what people were considering up to now but is the case where we don't have this inverse power so, so in most cases, in most situations we had uh, models where we have just products of the corresponding <coughs> emission matrices and uh, <coughs> Many people, including uh, Bertrand and Art, contributed a lot in uh, producing general solutions of these models. Um, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, <coughs> well, and uh, the model of this sort was somehow never uh, under consideration. And you see, in the very last term contains the external field, so this model looks like in a some generalized Kansevich model. Uh, also, we have this bunch of logarithmic terms coming from determinants. Uh, and actually, this term that we obtain um, from the condition that gamma 2 is bigger than gamma 3 is a good term because uh, it stabilizes the equilibrium distribution of eigenvalues. Uh, because we still have a restriction that we must integrate over positive definite matrices. In principle, again, from the matrix model point of view, it's not so severe restriction, so we know how to deal with this situation, but uh, sometimes it's uh, better to consider more analytic solutions, and when we have this term, this just uh, actually make a wall that restrict the eigenvalue distribution to the, in, to the positive part of the real axis. Okay, uh, so it's all te technical details, but uh, let's now come back a little bit and uh, consider what this model says about uh, the case of just a grotting in the sun form. So, in, in the case where we have only three ramification points, we don't have these intermediate matrices, and for, uh, for uh, double Hurwitz numbers, we just obtain a one matrix integral with external field, which is also known from physics. Uh, so, it's an integral of Brisson, Gross, Witten model and it's again known for 20 years that this integral is itself a KP tau function. Uh, well, uh, for simple Hurwitz numbers, uh, when, uh, when we don't have this lambda, then uh, we just have a linear term of this form and we obtain just a simple uh, Hermitian matrix model, also considered by uh, the Mello portion uh, Rambula with respect to the same problem. For clean belly morphisms, uh, of course, for simple Hurwitz numbers, when we set uh, 
now this times to be uh, so we just pick up the only the second time from this set and obtain the model with external field and with Gaussian and logarithmic term this model is known again to be a Konsevich Penner matrix model and this model is actually equivalent to one matrix model with matrices of the size uh, that is actually this coefficient by this logarithm term. So uh, this all well, uh, convince us that for Grotten Dick Descent and Fun we have uh, the models that were already well known to physicists uh, in the physics community. And now let me come back to a case where we have more than three ramification points and consider this uh, model that is a chain of matrices and actually uh, just today uh, Gernot Ackermann said that and demonstrated that this is very close to the model that appears in his studies so at least it shows that models of this sort of course study uh, and actually this model is, a, is my main object of studying because well, when I wrote it I realized that I'm not quite sure that I can solve it which is a good sign but indeed we can so first of all uh, how it's related to KP uh, well, no, first of all let me say why this model is somehow better than the standard chain of matrices because this model has more symmetries and these symmetries actually come from the fact that we don't have a prescribed uh, ordering of branch point, of a branch point because no one ever told us that this is the first, second, third and so on of course we can, instead of considering splitting of this sort we can consider the splitting of that sort so we must be able to interchange these uh, points and this is achieved by the following matrix transformations uh, which constitute a simple break group action and which leaves this action invariant this action on this page invariant so it's easy, easy exercise to check next uh, we can uh, present using this Harris Chandra it's on Zuber integration we can express everything in terms of eigenvalues of the corresponding matrices so well if I do some simple transformation with the uh, Van der Mond determinants and also introduce some logarithmic quantities then the I can just rewrite the same model in what is called a, a Todd chain like form, which contains a wandermont of the first set of variables, wandermont of uh, external matrix, and all the rest is described by this uh, actually uh, n minus two fold integration, whereas these flies you see in the exponential they. Uh, actually uh, constitute an action of a total chain line, uh, of a total chain type and well again uh, these are some uh, these are some special functions that we can evaluate but in some sense uh, or in some cases but uh, in principle well from the point of view of large n expansion probably but at least uh, to my, <coughs> from my point of view uh, we cannot say much about the possible form of large n expansion just looking at this integral so we need some other tools uh, and these tools actually are well known uh, tools of transformations that produce the loop equation so we can, and now, now I'm, I'll be very short, so because it's a long, it's a very long calculation actually. 
Uh, so we consider a transformation of, spacer, of special <coughs> sort written here, where we have uh, this special term coming in all these uh, variations of integration varieties, and they are multiplied by some Laurent polynomials that are independent on the corresponding variety. So, so this uh, uh, this hat x, uh, as usual, indicates the omission of the corresponding uh, variable from the set of arguments. So if we introduce the standard one loop mean, where zero, I say I indicate that I consider only planar contribution, and all the calculation will be only for planar graphs, then, sorry, here, but just to, for you to have a flavor of calculations, here are exact loop equations uh, appearing uh, upon the above variation. So we have uh, <coughs> many, of, of course, as many equations as, as the number of uh, variations here. Oops. And uh, we have some potentials obtained from the external field by the replica method. But it's just some, uh, you know, some uh, development of the good old technique by presenting <coughs> some variety in the bear. So, then uh, the idea to get to the spectral curve is to introduce some special variables. <coughs> and after some substitutions, well, like 6 to 10 pages, we obtain to the system of linear equations on these varieties, where in the right hand side we have some polynomials and some functions that we actually can calculate, also in terms of, um, of these omegas. And the idea is that since these equations hold for any choice of uh, this new variable z that we have here, then it must also hold in the case where this system is degenerate and the condition of, uh, uh, of resolution of this system at the point of degeneracy is precisely the spectral, the spectral curve. So, we, so from the degeneracy condition we express the z in terms of, of a special variable y of x which appears in all populations of matrix model type. And then we can write the spectral curve in this form as a condition <coughs> of solvability of this system. And for this term, well, we have a separate recurrent procedure expressing it as uh, through polynomials and rational functions of the same variable y. So at the end of the day, uh, we actually come to, the, to an algebraic curve. And just now, to conclude my scientific part, so if we have this algebraic spectral curve and two differential dx and uh, y dx, then we use the machinery of topological recursion that produce correlation functions and free energy terms for all uh, terms of Exp expansion in 1 over n. So to conclude, I just remember the time where the translation of the book It's its own in the bear appeared in Russia and it became extremely popular immediately. So all, all book, it becomes almost impossible to find these books in a bookstore. So and uh, Actually, again, I must say that probably it's one of the handful of cases where the translated textbook became so popular in, Ru in Russia or Soviet Union and not vice versa. Okay, thank you for your patience.